Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. And as you know, if you're a subscriber, I like to discuss marriage because our way of approaching marriage, and you could find out by going to our website, is vastly different from how others perceive marriage and help people with their marriages. And we take great pride in what we're doing at the Marriage Foundation because we're cutting edge. No one else is doing what we're doing. We're blending the spirituality of marriage with science. Everything we do is methodical. It is not just well thought through, but it's based on universal principles. So it always works. What we do always works. And this video, we're talking about something that is very important in marriages. The title is 10 Marriage Healing Ways to Communicate with Your Spouse. Now, I used to be a divorce mediator, so I know all there is to know about communication. Uh, I might be called a communications expert, and when I first started working with couples after I stopped helping couples end their marriage, uh, communication was an important, and still remains an important part of marriage. And when people go through rough things in their marriage, how they communicate is very important. It's not the only important thing, but it's very important. And we have courses and books, very useful, very affordable. So if you're having great difficulties in your marriage, by all means, see what we have as our offerings. We're a nonprofit. I'm a volunteer for the Marriage Foundation, and so are many who work for us and with us. So getting started. Again, 10 marriage healing ways to communicate better with your spouse. The emphasis is on healing, which means that you're having trouble in your marriage. And this is going to help you. It truly is. So number one, number one, I mean, you'll realize it as soon as I say it. You have to eliminate arguing. It's, it's sort of, what is arguing like? I mean, a great illustration is like going up in a hot air balloon. Beautiful views, the scenery is wonderful, you can feel the air. And when you're in a hot air balloon, someone once got me a ride for my birthday, you don't feel any wind because you're moving with the wind. So it's so peaceful. So imagine taking out a gun and shooting holes in the balloon. <laughs> it's like It's like that, arguing is like that. And I know that so many marriage experts, and I don't condemn marriage experts, but so many marriage experts don't follow our ways because they were mistaught. A lot of psychologists are starting to follow our ways. Some are becoming TMF marriage counselors and taking our online course. We welcome you if you have an interest in that. But they, before they learn our ways, they taught people how to argue properly. There is no proper way to argue. It's like a proper way to slap each other, to hurt one another, because arguing is destructive. It's a way of telling your spouse you're wrong, and they're telling you you're wrong. That's what arguing is, isn't it? You're wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. So in a marriage, you want to come together, right? You want to merge yourselves together at the highest level, your souls. And then when you're arguing, you're like this. So we eliminate arguing altogether. Can it be done? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's many ways. And we teach all those. And you can start by just don't say a thing. When you want to say something, don't say anything. Also, um, I recently did a video on um, arguing and communication. So we'll put that up on this screen so you know where to go so you can learn about that. Number two, remember, remember this is all about healing. So remember what is important to 
the two of you is your connection. And so you don't want to disturb that connection. You want to enhance it. So you're smart. You know what you say pushes your spouse away. You know what you say draws them to you. You know how you show your face, what is ugly and pushes away, and what is attractive and pulls. So remember what's important to your connection before you communicate, before you open your mouth, before you have something to say. And use your free will to decide to go the way that is better for your marriage, that enhances that love that makes both of you happy. Number three, this is so important. In our world, people have these ways of justifying things that I too bought into until I started diving into marriage and learning about marriage so I could share it. And this thing about anger, we hear about justified anger. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as anger being okay. I'm not talking about a display of anger when it's necessary. We sometimes have to display anger in situations in life as a form of self-protection. However, you never need to protect yourself in your marriage. Never, 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 ever. If you think you do, I'm telling you right now, your marriage is so far off the rails of happiness and love that you need to get it back on those rails. You never use anger in your marriage, ever. However, we got to go a step further. Never allow anger into your own mind. It blocks your heart. You cannot feel love when you are feeling anger. It is impossible. It's like feeling anger is falling down. Feeling love is flying up. You can't have both experiences at the same time. One of them has to go. Anger has to go. Now, people say, well, you can't get rid of anger. It's part of who you are. No, it isn't. Again, these, this is one of the things that I also had to learn to help people with their marriages. We don't even bother with anger management. We get rid of anger. You know, if you're having trouble, many, many of those who come to us for our courses come to us because they feel so much rage all the time and they know it's not right and they want to blame their spouse but you can't do that you know anger own it you if it's in you it's you who's harboring the anger you need to push it out completely and you may go well, how come i never heard of this before because we live in a world that is not that far advanced. We often say how far advanced we are technologically. We're not yet. And we certainly aren't as human beings very far advanced. Just uh, not long ago, we were fighting world wars. Talk about anger. But I've discovered that anger is not us. It has to be allowed into the mind. And that being said, when it does come in, when it wants to come in, you have the most powerful ally in the form of your free will, and you can keep it out. You can keep it out. Your free willpower, your willpower, your volition, these are tools that we're not taught that we have that are unbelievable in terms of their power and their ability to bring to us that which we want as human beings, which is happiness and love and marriage, happiness and love. That's why you got married. So never allow anger into your own mind. People say into your heart, 
That's not possible. Your heart is purity. Your heart means you, the soul. It isn't actually your heart. You are the heart. You're the soul. You have a body and a mind. This is not religious. It's just how it is. So anger doesn't go into your heart. It goes deep into your mind. It fakes you out. It makes you think that it's you, the heart, but it's not. No more anger. And if you don't know how, keep watching these videos. Are you a subscriber? You should be. And do it now. Subscribe. And maybe you need one of our books. Maybe you need the course. It's so affordable. So anger, anger's got to go. Don't allow it for sure into your speech. Don't allow it for sure onto your face. And who's going to fall in love with you when you have that going on? And of course, for a minute, it's the very first thing that's addressed. Number four, this is, this is one of those, well, all of these that I'm sharing with you should be known, but we're not taught how to be married. We're not taught much about anything in life. Well, we watch TV, we see sitcoms, and that's how we learn about being married. So number four, before you speak, proactively remind yourself of how important your soulmate is to you, how your life would be without them. And let that appreciation that you have for what they are in your life and push aside the arguments you may have had and the, and, you know, the weird stuff that is collected in your marriage. Push it aside and just remind yourself of what it was like when you met them, how your heart opened up how they're the only ones in the world where you have this connection. And then you don't want to disrupt that connection anymore. You want to enhance it. You want to build bridges, not tear them down. So remind yourself of that. Because all communication begins with thought. All thoughts are launched from feelings. All feelings need to be under the domain of your free will. Number five. Boy, is this important. Make your mind a vessel of love. You see, you're not your mind. You are a soul. God created man in his image. And this is universal. This is not religion. B or D or C or A. This is universal. God created us in his image. And I'm not religious here. And so what is that image? It isn't fingers and toes. It is the soul. You are a soul. You have a mind as a soul and you have a body as a soul. So it's misunderstood. People go, oh, I have a soul. Or... You know, I sold my soul to the devil. You can't sell your soul to the devil. You are the soul. You have a mind and you have a body. And one of the things that we teach, and it's very important, is to separate these. You're not your emotions. You're not anger. You're not greed, lust. You're none of those things. You're a soul. But you're allowing your mind to control you. So you want to start controlling your mind. You have this free will. You can infuse your mind with love. A thought comes up, it's not loving. Kick it out. Replace it with a loving thought, a loving feeling, until your heart is bursting open again the way it used to. Okay, number six. Use your face, your, <laughs> was that goofy? Use your face, your touch, your voice as your emissaries of love. Convey your love. That's communication. Using them, not just what you say, not just what comes out of your mouth, 
and also open your heart. Picture your heart with a door on it and open that door and let liquid love flow to your spouse. He or she may not pick up on it, but it's happening anyway because we're all electrical. We know that now and it, it works and our mind controls all and we control our mind. So you can infuse everything. Your marriage, fill it with love. Fill it with love. Use your touch. Don't be afraid. Smile. Don't be afraid. Lower your voice. You don't have to have a sexy voice. I'm not talking about that. But a loving voice. You can do all this. I know some of this you're not used to. We're not taught any of this, but you can recall some examples of when someone looked at you with that look of love, spoke to you with that angelic voice, smiled, touched you. You do that, you do that, and you'll see it makes a big difference. Okay, now this is practical. All these things I've talked about are practical, but on a different plane. This is practical, practical. When you're in a communication with your spouse, listen with deep interest. Speak without having any desires for results. So listen as if you're listening to them for the very first time and you want to hang on every word they say. You want to really understand them, not just what they're saying, but what does that tell you about them? Really listen deeply. Look into their eyes, if possible. Listen, hear, feel. Many, many years ago, there was a science fiction novel. Um, I think it was written by Arthur C. Clarke, Stranger from a Strange World or something like that. And there was this word grok, G-R-O-K, I think it was. And it, it meant to really feel what someone was conveying. That's what you want to do. Really feel it. Why? Because they'll feel that you appreciate them. And that is a necessity. They want to feel appreciated. You got married to them, so they would feel appreciated. And it's up to you to always fulfill that promise of yours, to appreciate them. And this is a good way to do it. So, and when you speak, don't look for results. Communicate with love, just to convey your love. And it could be wrapped around anything. Anything is a vehicle for love when you infuse it with love. You see? No expectations, no desires. You just want to give. Okay. Number eight. Keep the mundane stuff mundane. Mundane means your day to day, you got to eat, you got to sleep, you got to shave your face or your legs or whatever, you gotta bathe, you gotta you gotta make sure the kids are okay, you gotta make sure you're working and everything is fine, it's all mundane. That's not where you live your married life. You're supposed to live your married life on the highest planes of love and happiness. You have to do the mundane stuff, but you wanna live your marriage and communicate with each other on that highest plane of love and happiness. Those are the pole stars to follow in marriage. Happiness and love. That's where you're always going when you're married. Never learned that before, did you? But it's true, isn't it? You have to admit it. Number nine. When you're thinking about your soulmate, you're not with them necessarily, you could be. Make sure that those thoughts are love-filled. 
No criticism, no complaints, no condemnation, just supportive and appreciative and positive. Because that inner communication that you're having with yourself about your spouse is as important as the communication you have with them in the mundane world. Because it molds you in how they will see you. So it's very important. It's a metaphysical thing, isn't it? It's very important. Don't allow your mind to be down on them ever. In fact, the opposite. Make sure your mind, which is responsible to you, it's your mind, you have free will, you own it, but make sure it's doing your bidding and loving your spouse as you promised with all of your heart, mind, and soul. You see how important, how subtle everything is? Number 10. I think this is the most important of all. And that is, to make all of your actions expressions of your soul's love. Be more and more you, and you are the soul. Isn't this cool? Isn't this cool? I don't need to elaborate on that. We want people who understand what we're doing to become TMF marriage counselors. We have a course now to train. I trained the marriage counselors we have and had back in 2011 and 12. And now we're growing very rapidly. And we want more. So if you have an interest in us, we have an interest in you. Our mission is to serve by helping people with their marriage. We're not against Western psychologists, by the way. It's important to make that known. We don't believe in what they learned. We think they learned it all wrong. And it's sort of like when Galileo came up on the scene, man, that guy was brilliant, wasn't he? And he discovered the telescope and he realized that our planet is not the center of the universe. And you know what they did to him when he showed them scientifically? They put him under house arrest for the rest of his life. They wanted to kill him, but he was too famous. Thank God no one's going to kill me. But these discoveries didn't mean all the scientists of the day were bad people. They were good people, just like all the psychologists are good people. They want what's best, but they mislearn because the information is now coming out. We're on the cutting edge. I am Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I'm here to serve. We're all here to serve. Visit our website. See our offerings. Join with us. We appreciate you. We're glad you're here. Like the video. Thank you for visiting, and God bless you. Take care.